should I do this then, Mike? Oh, baby. There we go. Nice. Well, <laughs> looking at everybody now. Now this is now this is good streaming content. <laughs> and then you can top, take the top off. You could do all sorts of stuff. It's, it, it, it's really a, it's kind of it, it frees your imagination. This one. <laughs> can you get into the now? If you were just to to go rogue a little bit, can you go into the fair into the space? A lot of teachers will start a new topic by finding out what kids know, okay, like making a T-chart, H-chart. Um, what do you know about the topic? W, what do you want to know? What questions do you have? And then L, what have you learned? So it's something that we would write on chart paper in classrooms, kind of a very common comment. Like teaching 101 right there, folks. Right, exactly. KWS. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Sandbox. Once again, it is whatever day it is in the longest year of our lives. Thursday. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Steve. We're, um, hey, listen, this is exciting. We're joined this morning by Rami Gaddis. And just so everyone knows who Rami Gaddis is, um, my former boss. <laughs> Still am, still am, Mike. In yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, Rami is the CEO of Logics Academy. Um, they are um, easily Canada's best STEM and robotics um, education device provider. Um, kick ass in multi faceted ways. And uh, Rami is joining us on the stream this morning to talk about. Wonder Workshops, Dash's Neighborhood. Yeah, thanks for having uh, me, Mike and Isaac and Steven. I'm so delighted to be here with you guys today. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I get to learn today. <laughs> well, hopefully we're going to make this fun, super, super exciting, and uh, and we're going to bring back the eight-year-old in all of us today. So. Oh, boy. Giddy up. So I've never done – so actually, why don't you – explain a little bit about what Dash's Neighborhood is, because this actually came out after I left Logics Academy, so I actually don't really have a good idea what this is either. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, it's, it's been, as I'm sure, you, you know, you, you guys chat about it regularly, and I'm sure, as we all know, in education right now, it's, it's been a really interesting time of uh, being able to connect the, the educator, the teacher, the student, the parent, all in this ecosystem. But um, so Dash's Neighborhood was actually a project that's been going on, um, probably started actually about a year and a half ago uh, by Wonder Workshop, um, which came and, and sprung from the idea of, uh, you know, schools and t t students buy these Dash robots that we all have come to love at home and in the classroom. But we know there's a significant piece around equity. There's a significant piece around prototyping, planning uh, your code and trying it out before you get to actually test it on the robot. And so the, in, the initial goal and vision of Dash's Neighborhood had actually nothing to do with COVID-19, it was prior to all that. Um, the goal was how do we equip every single child and every single learner to have the experience of having a robot in a truly authentic virtual way without necessarily having the robot right at their fingertips when they're doing that. So you can imagine an environment where a classroom has, you know, 30 students and, and they're all trying to play with Dash virtually. And then when the robot comes to them, they can seamlessly just jump into connecting a physical robot and testing their code on the real robot or trying it out and, on the real robot and then going back to the virtual environment and going back and forth. So that was one of the main drivers for Dash's neighborhood um, from the onset. And uh, the second one was, what if students can actually con continue to do their homework or continue to code from home and then come back and show their work to their teacher or their friends in the classroom and show it on the physical robot, whether or not they had the robot at home. So those were kind of the goals and purpose of, um, of Dash's neighborhood. Uh, and then as it was uh, planned to launch for later this year, 
uh, sort of, you know, we got into this wonderful time period we're in and, and it kickstarted the launch of Dash's Neighborhood to give access to every child to actually learn from home. So that was really the, you know, the, 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 the time period of when all things just come together uh, at the right time um, to allow... Uh, talk, about t- talk about perfect timing. I, exactly. <laughs> like it was kind of a absolute perfect timing because I, I can assure you it wasn't, I don't, you know, it wasn't intended to be launched right at COVID, but uh, it happened to, to coincide from a timing perspective. Wow. Awesome. So that's kind of uh, cool. So, uh, you know, today, my, I, I hope we get to actually uh, delve into it. I'm going to get you guys accounts and set you up and play together and, awesome. and get you into Dash's world. Um, yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah. yeah. So the, the last thing I'll share with you is Dash's neighborhood is all interconnected with what's called Class Connect. Um, I don't know if you remember this one, Mike, but uh, Class Connect was a way for a teacher or an educator or a parent uh, or a coach to see how their child is progressing through the learning to code puzzles and activities inside Blockly for for Dash uh, and be able to actually individualize and support every child based on their learning. So that was another component that was tied into uh, Dash's neighborhood. So if every child's playing at home, programming their Dash robot to take on these puzzles, learning to code at home, the teacher, no matter where they are, whether they're walking around and seeing the students or they're sitting in a classroom or they're in a different city or they're in a different country, can now see what, how the child's doing, what lesson and content and concept they're, they're progressing quickly in, they're struggling with, and they can individualize that help back to the student. And that's a super critical component, especially in the time period we're in today. Amazing. So I'll, I'll get to show you that too today, which is cool. Awesome. All right. So quite simply, um, this is Blockly, the, the app that you program and play with Dash and Dot. Dash and Dot are our favorite robots. Um, and it was this, this has always been available on a Chrome browser um, meant for Chromebooks or Mac or, or Windows. Um, so, you, you know, children just go to uh, code.makewonder.com to uh, join, uh, to, to be able to program with their Dash robot. So either of you can go to code.makewonder.com right now. And, there. And, and when you're there, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign out here to, um, to show you what it looks like. And, and so we all look the same here. Uh, basically, you're, that's the page you go to to program a robot if you have a physical robot. Uh, okay. And that's when you would add a Dash robot. Uh, you know what, I'm, I might even... So of course he has me. one just right behind him. It's like, of, hey, Rambi, do you have a robot? Hey, right here. No problem. Oh, you, 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 gotta, you, gotta, you gotta see my little uh, treasure chest back here of all the robots. But um, I don't have kids yet, but I would imagine if I did, our, our, our home during COVID would be like oh robot my. play central. Yeah, great for the kids, bad for the parents, buddy. I got experience, I got experience, I got experience with this. <laughs> So um, if, for those of you who've seen Dash before, you know, you could, this app was simply when you turn on the Dash robot, it comes on. Uh, for those who don't know Dash, it's such a super social robot. Uh, so, you know, it talks to you, it blinks, it yawns, it goes to sleep, you can record your voice. And those are all features that uh, Wonder has really wanted to integrate into this virtual environment. So normally this is where you would connect. But what I'm going to do today is we're going to actually create a classroom. I'm going to create a classroom. And what do we want to call our classroom? The sandbox. The sandbox. Okay. So we're going to call this classroom the sandbox. Sweet. And we're going to say we're not a specific grade. We'll just do not applicable. And so now we have our sandbox. And I'm going to put in uh, the students in that sandbox. You can obviously import and things like that. But for the sake of today, And then we'll choose a little avatar for you, Mike. And a, what's your favorite color, Mike? Uh, you know, that purple sounds cool. It looks good. All right. I dig purple. And we'll do the same for Steve. So you could see it's putting in a profile name. You can obviously change it. I'm leaving the default. We'll choose this funky horse looking one for Steve. And what's your color, Steve? Uh, let's go with green. Green, awesome. 
Now I'll put mine in. I'll do this panda and I'll go with red. So we've got our, so far, three students in the class here. And now on your end, uh, all you need is what's called the, my teacher code. So we're going to use ATCP1. So in Blockly here, you'll go to Manage Profiles. And you'll notice you could actually, uh, it's fully integrated with Clever. Uh, and it's also got Google uh, G Suite SIS for teachers. But for it's got a full Clever integration. Um, Right, right when you log, you can use. But for our sake, we're going to go in with teacher code. So where do I, where do I, I clicked on play with dash and dot, right? Yeah, great. So you're going to go to, uh, once you do that, you're going to go on manage profiles or click your alligator on the top right here. That would have been uh, beside your orange plus sign. Got it. Yeah. And then you'll open up this select your profile screen. Click and I'm going to go to teacher code. Manage, manage profile, teacher code. And ah, there's, perfect. of course, videos that show all this. but And then enter teacher code ATCP1. A-T-C-P-1. Do I need a device name? Uh, just put your name. I'm going to put my name for mine. Ha-ha. Okay. So you should all get this message that basically you're, it's waiting for me to approve you as your teacher. Yes. And when I go to manage... Uh, devices here, I see that Mike is coming in with a Chrome browser, so I'll let him connect. Rami's coming in with a Mac, so I'll let him connect. And Steve's coming in with a Chrome browser, so I'll let him connect. So this is a teacher permission to make sure that the student is actually part of your classroom. Now, there was a question in the chat if um, participants that are watching can join in and play along. Uh, that's a great question. You know, what I'll do is I'll add a couple of students here in the sandbox. Shreffler, you're always a gamer, buddy. I love it. You just like, <laughs> Shreffler just so, wants to play. You know, I'll just make a couple of uh, student accounts here. And I don't know everyone's name. I apologize. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting in numbers. Oh, okay. uh, that's fine. Yeah, Brad and Amanda both want to play, so... That's exciting. Yay. I'm sure I'm sure Becky will want to play. I have a feeling Rising Sun will want to play. Oh my god, look at us. <laughs> it gets me in trouble. That's funny. I apologize if I'm spelling anyone's name wrong. Rising Sun, you said. Don't yeah. try to spell Shreffler. Yeah, yeah, just, just go Brad. With Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so and then I'll make a couple of extra ones in case anyone joins after uh, and wants to take it here. But anyways, you can see this is all live and dynamic. So even if you give me names as we're playing, we can add them in and That's get great. them to join. Okay. Um, so um, now when you go into your profile, let's go to the sandbox. And, and then you can see all of our profiles there uh, when you go into the sandbox. So choose your profile. So make sure to choose the sandbox classroom and choose your profile. Oh, sandbox. Oh, did I do this right? Oh, sandbox. Ah, there we go. And now and then, I see I see all of our, our the other students. Exactly. So you want to choose yourself as your profile. Nice. And then your avatar is going to be in the top right. So I'm the on this little uh I don't even know what this is, but I'm the red caricature on the on the top right there. That's me. So the code to get in the the URL is um code.makewonder.com, right? Correct. And my specific teacher code. And the teacher code was. Go ahead. ATCP1. Nice. Okay. Chat, we typed that in the chat for you. If you need it, there it is. You can join the class. Um, we gave. I believe we gave a couple people specific names. Uh, I think there's a Brad, there's a Becky, there's a Rising Sun. Um, there's also... Amanda. Whoa. Steve is solving problems. You know, it's what I do. <laughs> yeah, so right when you go in, if you've never used this, I would urge you to just go into puzzles. Yeah. And, and you'll notice right away when you open it, um, what happens here is an actual virtual dash neighborhood appears. So I was going to show you both 
uh, environments at once, yeah. but maybe I'll I'll uh, I'll switch back and forth. So this is this is Dash's neighborhood right here. Um, you you have a full three D world of Dash. Um, you have an actual grid, a Cartesian grid on the bottom as the mat. Uh, okay. You have obstacles and objects, and uh, you can actually go explore the world. Um, so you know what? Let's before we start doing puzzles, I want to just put it into full screen mode here and show you how you can view the robot. So Dash has got all the same features. It's got lights. It's got sensors on the front, on the back. It's got the microphones. It's got the speaker. Um, so the whole idea behind this is everything, the goal is everything that you could do with a physical Dash, you could do with the virtual Dash. Now, it's not 100% there yet, um, as in it's constantly being added for accessories and components uh, to it. But at the moment, a lot of the features are in there. And I want to show you a couple of those features, and then we'll get to play. So maybe I'll start off in free play mode. And as always, you can create a new project. So I'm going to call it the, um, the Sandbox Demo. Right. So I'm creating my Sandbox Demo project. And, and then if, if, you've, if any of you have used uh, Google Blockly or Scratch, this is a block-based uh, programming language for Dash called Blockly. And so you could do everything you would normally do. So you can grab your forward block. You could set, you know, I want to drive forward 40 centimeters at a speed of normal. I want to uh, look, you know, to the left or right. Oh, nice. And the same experience that students have, they might not know what degrees are. You could just grab the same head and say, I want to look over there, uh, you know, the, the other right. <laughs> uh, so there's right 45 degrees. Nice. Um, I want to put in lights so i want to change all the lights of my robot um hey remy yeah let's pop pop back out and approve all of the requests that you have now you have a very popular class <laughs> cool oh request yeah I, pending, oh. Request pending. <laughs> <laughs> so i see becky uh -oh, Brad, wrong. rising sun amanda aye, aye, aye. aha wait a minute that's weird Teach Dash to look left. Oh, I forgot to look right. So you're probably going through the puzzles, learning all about how to control Dash. And, and what's cool yeah, is also, it. you're also learning how to code. And, and what, yes. what's really cool is it's teaching all the fundamentals of coding, going through that scope and sequence of, okay. you know, fundamental sequencing. Uh, you're going to get into uh, conditionals, while like events, uh, loops, variables, functions, all the core uh, coding concepts in a fun, interactive way for students. Absolutely. And, and by the way, I, I forgot to mention, if any of you want to do it in a different language, um, you, if you change your device setting, um, so I know in Canada, we're very focused on bilingual. This is fully bilingual in English and French, but there are other languages as well for, for global implementation. Like Spanish? That would be the, a lot of our audience uh, would have questions about Spanish. Yeah, I haven't tried myself the other languages, but I, I know in the Blockly app, there's Mandarin, there's German, there's Spanish. So there's a number of other languages available. Nice. That's and awesome. And actually the full experience changes. So like for students, all the text in the instruction change, the actual blocks change. So it's, it's, it's fully integrated uh, and, and, and uh, customizable Aww. in that perspective. Now, in, we should, as a as a kind of unrelated note but sort of related dash also like the actual physical robot when you when you change the language in blockly it'll actually change the language that the robot the actual physical robot speaks we do this all the time doing robotics training you know you you change the language of the robot and it speaks to you in actual french i imagine that the dashes speak in spanish as well and I love that also from like an empathy slash equity piece that the robot can actually speak the language of the student um, and it allows the student to, you know, see themselves in the device that they're using, uh, which is super important. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to show you something really cool uh, soon as well of the, the whole point of how I'm, um, I'm able to plan out and, and test my code. But if I want to send this code to my physical dash in my room right now, 
I can absolutely oh, right. connect my mm. robot right away and um, my device will obviously has to have Bluetooth, but it'll recognize once I turn on the robot that there are robots in the room. It will connect to this robot and then it will send that code to my physical robot. And um, there you go. So I have my robot called RG Demo. So I pair that robot um, once I turn on my yeah. Bluetooth settings. And then what happens, you'll notice right away, it says my simulator is now disabled and I'm now using the physical robot. And I can send that same code right away to the physical dash. That's so good. It's so I'm smart. Yeah, and then yeah. once I turn off the robot, so say I have to share it with another student or I leave my classroom, in seconds, my virtual robot comes back on the screen and then I can continue testing my code on the virtual environment. Wow. So you could see I just ran my little code here, but I, I love how uh, uh, smooth and simple the transition between virtual and physical is. So you don't have to fiddle around in the classroom, or you can imagine if a child takes this home and is playing at home and then comes back to the room, um, that's oh, just right. instantaneous. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's explore the world a bit and explore what you could do. But um, I mean, you, you're, you folks are, are you're probably coding <laughs> experts, so I, I know you're probably zipping through the puzzles. I've been watching in the background here, uh, so you'll see on my screen, oh, I can right. actually see as your teacher or yeah. educator or coach where everyone is on their getting their driver's license. So I see Steve is zipping right through ahead of everyone. Um, and it's probably because he started earlier, but we'll, we'll say <laughs> it's because he knows how to code faster. But see here, Becky actually just ran into a little challenge and it gave me an exclamation mark. And when I mm. opened that, I can see what Becky's current solution was and what the suggested solution was. And I could see that she spent less than one minute trying to solve it. So the idea here is I can actually go in and whether I'm chatting with Becky virtually or in the classroom, walk over to Becky and say, hey, why don't we talk about this concept and how can I help you through this concept so you can better understand it? So you can really personalize the support and the learning. Uh, and then for each lesson, uh, so this is driving school lesson six, for example, uh, there's actual lesson plans, activities, all the curriculum alignment, uh, the coding concept, the uh, ISTE standard lesson aligned lesson plans, the CSTA in Canada, we have all the provincial aligned lessons as well for all the, the, the content. So really for an educator, yeah. all that's ready and, and developed for them. Um, yeah, this is rad. Like, this is exactly what people needed, yeah. to be perfectly honest. And and a lot, um, a couple of people are really impressed with the teacher view. Um, but yeah, and gosh, in this time with COVID and everything, I mean, you know, like you said, it was uh, unanticipated that the timing was going to be so perfect. But, you know, allowing kids, especially kids that got had some exposure to Dash and other robots, I mean, whether they did or didn't, but kids that did, and this was something familiar that they enjoyed doing in school, to have this opportunity now to continue virtually is awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and what's super cool too, and, and we'll do that in a sec, because I'm going to do a little challenge and share it with you, is students and, and children can actually share their code with each other remotely, anonymously. Mm. Uh, if you notice, you all logged in as students, and uh, I don't. You don't have an email account. There's no student data or security or privacy. There is a profile name, but that could be anonymous. Um, so really built for you know that kindergarten to grade uh, five student to, to really manage uh, work and play and 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 then also interact with their teacher. Uh, in a really synchronous and, and simple way. We're already getting requests for you to keep the uh, to keep the classroom open for a little bit while longer after we uh, done after we're done, so that people can keep playing. Yeah, I mean, and and for those of you who haven't seen the whole puzzle chain, like you're everyone right now is just in the first puzzle. Yeah, which yeah. It's called getting your driver's license. It's like level one, just you know, one oh one of how to use Dash and how to code Dash to drive around. But as you can see, there are lots oh and God. lots of hours and hours of, um, of content and activities that students can go through 
uh, through all the puzzles, which is really cool. That's how many lessons and does it have a number? We we don't see like a huge view of your screen. Unfortunately, I don't have a view that isolates your screen. How many lessons are there? I can see there's lots, but I'm curious how many yeah, there's there actually about, are. There's, uh, there are 13 puzzles overall, and each puzzle has somewhere between 5 to 12 lessons. Um, so, you know, call it 13 by 8. So roughly, you know, we're about 100 or so uh, activities. So a couple questions in the in the chat too here, Rami. This is this is awesome. Um, would would Wonder Workshop and Logics consider this more of an ideal environment for self paced learning, or is this more ideal for um, synchronous online, like in class learning? I I would almost suggest it's both, but yeah, I mean you you got it, Mike. Like the whole goal of this and uh, is especially with the content and the curriculum is right now we're doing all the puzzles, which are meant to be self-paced, student-led learning. Um, so the students can go at their own pace, at their own time uh, to, to, to do these activities. There are, however, above, in addition to these puzzles, there are structured activities that can be done in a synchronous environment. So above all of these puzzles and activities, there's actual lesson plans and curriculum for the teacher to lead a learning environment for, for a whole classroom. Whether that's live virtual or uh, synchronous in the classroom, um, you know, either environment it's available for it. So I, I would, we tend to see that most teachers um, use the puzzles that we're doing right now in, as an asynchronous environment so that every student can progress on their own pace um, and, and get the support they need. Uh, while the, the lessons uh, are, are kind of a synchronous environment where a teacher can lead a lesson plan uh, with a whole classroom, uh, again, whether virtual or in person, uh, through a, a learning concept. And that could be a learning to code concept, or what's really cool is the cross-curricular lesson plan library. So you could yeah. do a lesson on, on geography. You could do a lesson on, like there are lessons on, you know, studying California or um, learning about magnetism or forces. Uh, there's lessons on math. There's tons on math, tons on storytelling and language and, you know, character development and plot development, all those kinds of Co uh, concepts uh, all align to different standards. Um, I don't know if you said this to us before, but folks, you can actually just drive in the world you using can? your W. Yes, using. I I, I'm sitting here going, "Oh my god, I'm just driving around." <laughs> when you get to that? So, so I I clicked oh, on. I clicked on underneath the preview screen for like your robot on the right hand ah. side. There's like a full screen icon. And if you just click on that, it full screens the view so you can just see the world. And then if you just do like WASD, you can totally drive dash around in the yeah. world, which I'm doing. And it's so fun. Oh, I see. Well, that's when you're <laughs> out. But you have to be, I think, out of the coding environment, it seems, from trying to do it. Oh, there we go. Yep, yep, yep. You you don't, yeah, you don't, your code stays there. You don't lose anything, uh, Steve. It's, yeah. just, uh, it's just when you go into full screen mode there. And then <laughs> on the bottom right, you can get out of it any time. But this cool. is like if you've used the uh, Go app in, in, uh, in, uh, w along with Dash in the, in the physical robot. Right. The Go app is your remote control app. Uh, this gives you that same feature inside of Blockly here. Oh, apparently you can drive without it being full screen as well. So you can just do, yeah, yeah. So even in the coding room or the coding area where you have the code on the left side and the preview on the right side, you can still WASD and drive. Um, yeah. And uh, it's kind of also meant so that you can, um, you know, physically locate Dash in, a, in an area before right. you start your code. Right, right. Uh, uh, Grandma Deb, Steve uh, just linked the uh, the code uh, or the URL to the site. Uh, there was another question that I thought was really good, and I got to scroll up because the chat is so active. Um, you said it could be on Windows. Uh, it can be on Chromebooks, um, obviously. Can it be on iPads? Can this work on iPads? Great question. So right now, uh, the... So Class Connect work uh, it is, a, is on any browser. Um, the app here that we're playing with, code.makewonder.com, 
is on any Chrome browser at the moment, so on any device, but a Chrome browser, launching on iPad for back to school for September of this year. Wow, great. Sorry, so can I clarify then, can it run on Chrome on an iPad? Um, the Dash's neighborhood cannot. Blockly has always run on yes. iPad. Uh, however, Dash's, the virtual robot is coming out only in September. Uh, actually, in, it's going to be in the native um, iPad app as well. Uh, awesome. So it's not, it's not at the moment on iPad, but it's coming for September. Perfect. Again, perfect timing. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's build a little, I know everyone's exploring and continuing their puzzle. So go right ahead. Look at that. Steve's already on Dash's snowman and it's his first struggle. He's finally faced an exclamation mark. <laughs> um, so a couple of other little things. And, and so this, oh, I shouldn't have showed you the solution. Should I have Steve? Oh, that's right. I'm, 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 so, <laughs> I'm so intently looking at my screen that I don't see yours. So let's see. Um, but so I guess what I also... Let so me just ahead. answer this question. Uh, Gram Grandma Deb, kids at home can use this how? So, so kids at home, like, so this creates a classroom environment online for students so they can go to that code.makewonder.com create a student profile um, using a teacher code that um, their teacher would give them and then they can do coding and robotics lessons right from home without having to have a dash robot at all one of the biggest problems with um, a physical robot is that not every student has a physical robot and so if you were a computer science and coding and robotics teacher, um, you know, you were kind of COVID really screwed you for lack of better words, um, because I mean, you were teaching using robots and you couldn't give a robot probably to every student. So, you know, it was very hard to do a, at least a robotics centered computer science program because you had students that just didn't have access to robots. So this allows you to have a student use a robot um, in a virtual environment. Um, and because Dash is so kid-friendly, so popular, um, and the barrier to entry to this is so incredibly low, um, it means that you can do this with like almost any student. And, and it looks like because there's hundreds of lessons, the complexity of the scales actually quite a bit higher than the actual quote unquote wheelhouse of dash which is Hello. kind of like that grade Hello. three to five range um right into in my mind you know grade six seven and eight potentially depending on how Hello. complex that coding we'll know Hello. in about 20 minutes because steve will Hello. get there and let us know how hard Hello. it is um at the rate that he's going Yippee. playing music yeah. as you can see which is yeah. great uh -huh. yeah which is super awesome Mike. So i i agree that um you know the, the idea behind this is a, a coach, a parent, or a teacher actually is the one that creates the account and creates the student profile. So a student can actually create their own profile. Um, that's that's how this is set up, the, the teacher or the parent. So there's access for a teacher, a parent, or a coach um, to create an account. Uh, and it's actually free. For, for the first month is free, and they have it free open right now during the COVID time. Um, Right now, it's been announced till end of June, so so we'll see. But no matter what, it's always free for the first month. Um, and then there's different packages depending on it, you know, parent, teacher, uh, class, school, district, all those kinds of good things. Um, and then a student just goes in. They, they just put in the teacher code and, and open up their profile and continue <laughs> playing. And what I love is they don't even need to do it on their own device. It's saved on the cloud. So they can continue and pick up where they left from on – you know, whether they're traveling to the cottage or the, whether they're, you know, going on vacation on whether they're at home or, you know, maybe mom's house or dad's house or grandparents' house or they're at the school environment or they're one day in the school and four days at home and through a blended learning environment. So it, it really supports this uh, learn anywhere, anytime, play anywhere, anytime, yeah. but yet there is a progression and I'm still connected to my coach, my parent or my teacher awesome forward backward and forward again i gotta catch up to steve this is a problem 
Let's see where you are here. I'm oh, not Mike, very you're, far. You're very behind. I, I, it hey, looks like sorry, Becky. Mike. It looks like Becky's right up there. I've been working here. Right. Hey, I just, I just a side note. I got a weird. I just got a weird message, like on huh. Twitch or whatever, that we uh, reached our record number of comments for a single stream uh, today already. So, like, knock. It, it, knock. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That means well, that I, people I are people are super problems, people are so. super interested in in this. Knock. Knock. <laughs> What are you knock, saying? Knock. I don't know if my sound is. I can hear you, Steve. Well, you can hear me. Can you yeah. hear my computer? You yeah, computer. yeah. We've been hearing your computer the whole time. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. You, listen, does it say knock knock when I press this? Hold on. Oh, I was wondering why the hell you were saying knock knock is actually knock, what I was wondering. Knock. Yeah, no, it was very purposeful. Um, but does it say, did it say it out loud just now or no? Click the play button. I am playing, hitting the play button. Knock. Preview knock. sound. Nothing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we hear it. Knock, it's saying knock, knock, knock. Yes, it certainly is. Okay, so that's weird, because I don't know why I'm not hearing that, but, you know, that's all right. So, yeah, as long as I guess you're, you're, you're playing with sounds now, Steve, which is really cool. So you can, of yeah. course, um, so I'll show you a couple of cool features that I love about the virtual world. So first and foremost, um, the f first question that most people ask is, well, how do you replicate input knock, for, for students? Knock. So if, you, if you've ever played with Dash, Dash has got buttons, uh -oh. it's got sensors on the front, on the back. So you could say things like, when I speak to Dash or when I press the top button. So what, what's been built here, which I love, if you could see okay. on my screen, I have a wait function that says, wait for Dash top button to be clicked. Um, or you know what, maybe let's, let's do a different one that's easier here. Um, maybe we'll say, when Dash's top button uh, is clicked, let's start the code. So if I start my code right now, nothing will happen because it's waiting for top, the top button. And you'll see this robot inputs panel appears on the bottom right. And then instead of physically oh, going and clicking Oh my on, God. Yeah, so you have all the robot inputs. Knock, and now I click knock. on it and that will trigger that um, event to happen. Um, so it's, it's super cool because you get all of the robotics components. It's not just a 2D you know, um, coding platform. You actually get all the inputs from uh, a robotics environment. So let's do, for example, if you have an object in front, right? So you can, you have all the controls that you had before. Yeah. And, and so when, I mean, this is uh, a little bit different hey. because you're clicking a button, but what you'll see hey, is hey, when hey. you click the button, uh, it drops a, a virtual hand in, in front of the robot that triggers uh, Dash to go forward. So when I press play here, Dash will wait because it's, it doesn't have any instruction to go. And then when I put an obstacle in front, it triggers the code to go and now it'll move forward for 40 centimeters, look to the right at 45 degrees and turn the lights orange. I'm going to try to see if this will work with my mic for a second. So in theory, I should be able to just say any, say, well, so it says here, here, voice, hey. test, test. Not, but I don't know if that's Not. working really. Hey. Yeah, you should just be able to click on my sounds and then record a sound. Yeah, I did that. I think I'm having trouble because, you know, Brad pointed out maybe because um, my mic is being used by knock, the stream knock. that it's not also accepting it as an input here because I did um, record. Let's see. Hi, everyone. My name is Virtual Dash. Knock, knock. Let's see if yours works. So mine is working, except you can't knock, hear it because it's in knock. my headphones. Well, I uh, we so I, I heard it come through your headphones, but yeah. Oh, did you? <laughs> well, so, yeah, you, 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 it's weird. You hear everything that goes on over here. I yes, am hearing. Uh, I hear hey. everything, people. So hey. knock, that, that knock. did record there, and now I have that sound file saved uh, in my code. So let me let me clean up my code. Um, I was just try, trying to show you all the hey. knock knock. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Not, but that's, I think it's on my end. I'll play with it later. This so is so damn cool. It really is. I'm mm -hmm. I'm a fan. I, I can't believe, you know, yeah, they did a good job with this. Uh huh. So I'll show you a couple of things because a lot of people look at this and say, well, this is, you know, this looks really cool for very young children. But 
I don't know if many of you realize how complex we can get with this. Um, so I can design, I can create my own functions. Um, so let's call this function drive in square. Okay. Um, I can create a function. I can define variables. So instead of you know x, y, z, they're fruits. Uh, I can give a numerical value to a variable. So let's do, we're going to draw knock, knock, forward. Knock, knock. I'm going to turn left 90 degrees. Hello. I'm going to put that in a loop. Hey. So I'm going to repeat that. Aww. Knock, knock. Four times. And then now I can call my, um, my function drive in a square anytime I want in my code. So I've defined my function and I've oh, called my function in this part of the code, which is, um, you know, a, a really cool tool. I can create as many functions as I want and right. use them in my code. And, and also most people don't know the, the capability of variables I think is super powerful. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, how do I drive more than the hundred centimeters that's limited in the forward block? Well, I could do a drive knock, and say, knock. I can actually set my wheel speeds like centimeters per second. I could uh, move a distance. Uh, so for example here, I could just say drive instead of driving forward, I'm going to drive orange and orange. I'm going to set to 500 centimeters or 500.25 centimeters. Hmm. So now I, I can drive specific uh, distances rather than just saying 10 centimeter increments uh, for only a limited 100 centimeters. And then the robot won't stop at those increments. It's, it's going to continuously go for 500 centimeters. So I, I think those are super cool that you could use uh, uh, coding concepts like variables and, and functions in there. Look left, look right, look f forward. How do I look forward? It looks like Brad just took over here. <laughs> Brad. Don't worry, I, I, I can always reset the progress. Of ah! the <laughs> if, if anyone wants. Brad, can, uh... you don't get all <laughs> cocky. Don't get all thinking you're something else. We can just get Rami to reset it, and we'll put you back down a couple of pegs. Well, so, see, Brad, Brad took advantage of the fact that I, I got stuck in the puzzles when the with the um, not being able to speak. So I'm sort of at a, at a, at a standstill <laughs> there. But now I'm in my projects and I'm making cool stuff happen. So, I'll show you for a second here um, as an example. Say I'm going to do it to myself because I haven't done any puzzles and I'm going to just cheat here. Um, so say, for example, you have a student who's been really doing this and maybe in completely different country or different school and their profile didn't get carried over for whatever reason. You could just say, and they say, well, I'm actually up to you know dash on planet X. You could just say, well, okay. Remy here is done, uh, so you could choose a student or everyone or whoever you'd like to control um, or change their profile. And I'm going to put uh, Remy on dash on planet X level one. And automatically what it does is it unlocks all those challenges. And as a student, um, the student gets a notification that says, uh, your teacher might have changed your puzzle progress or progression. And so now, all of a sudden, all my puzzles got unlocked all the way until there, uh, even though I didn't actually complete them. And for the teacher profile, it doesn't just blindly show them that. It actually differentiates it. So if you could see on my screen, it, it turns them all white instead of gray. And that means they've been unlocked, but the student didn't actually complete it, compared to the green check marks, which means the students completed it. I'm uh, I'm trying very slyly to set up a view for us to see your screen in full screen. It's happening slowly. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get there for people. I'm gonna get there for people. I could zoom in if that helps, Mike. I I'm gonna have this here in a second. I I have this technology. 
But hey, Remy. Uh, yeah, keep going. Is there? It, it seems like Grandma Deb is is not able to see. I, I'm I'm guessing like in mine, I see the simulator window. So when I hit play, it happens automatically. Um, I don't know if she's not seeing the maybe the the simulator window. Is that? Is there yeah, a way to? Yeah, that could be. That could be because I haven't. Uh, is it Deb Mac? Um, maybe. I, I haven't approved anyone since a while, so they might but, not be joined my, to my class. So if you're not connected oh, to see. a teacher, I see. I if see. you haven't put in a teacher code, um, you still have access to Blockly to program your physical Dash robot, but you then don't have access to the virtual Dash. The only way you get access to virtual Dash is you have to be connected to a teacher code for a teacher who has a Class Connect account. So she's pleading now, please, please give her access. I'm, I, I'm assuming here it's Deb Mac. Yes, yes. Okay, so access has been granted. Ask and ye shall receive. Grandma okay, Deb. that's the kind of customer service you receive at Team Sandbox. That's right. Look at us. So I want to show you one other thing that I think is super cool, and then maybe let's uh, see if there's any questions, but. Um, I'm going to go back to, to my project. Remember, I was building my project, uh, Sandbox Demo. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my Sandbox Demo project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this blue viewfinder, magnifying glass, Google, Oculus Rift, whatever you think it looks like. <laughs> And I'm going to click here on share my project. And I can anonymously upload this project to the cloud. So now all of you can copy that code. So FOOC, so that's a specific code that's been created for my project. Nice. And then you can go and start a new project by going to the menu, the three horizontal lines, and go to my project, and then you're gonna click this download button, the download arrow, and you'll enter that code, F-O-O-C, and click download. All and right, I got it, that was like instantaneous. Instantaneously, everyone who I shared that code with can have access to my project. Now, they're not able to, they're not editing my project, you notice here, you, when you get it, you're able to save it in your own account. So you're not actually changing my project. You, you're making a copy of that code for yourself. That's awesome. But what I love about this is you can imagine I could start a code. I could share it with Steve. Steve, you can work on it. Share it with Mike. Mike can work on it. Share it back with you. And now we have a collaborative way of sharing. Or mm -hmm. another way you could do is, is grab, like, say we, we create different functions together. And then we put all those functions into one code uh, as, as one person amalgamates our code. So now uh, let me just get that part straight because I'm thinking of it in comparison to so many other things. So I downloaded it. I don't see where I now save it to mine. Is that um, I, yeah, so I'll, I'll walk you through that again. So here you go to okay. my project, you yeah, download. I, I you downloaded in, it. I, yeah, type in the code and then mm -hmm. download. And then on the left, you'll see your menu looks different now. You see the save button on the bottom left above the play? Yeah, but my, that's so, grayed out for me right now. Oh. Um, why would it Jeez. be grayed out? I, I, don't I don't know. It's like um, maybe... Oh, oh, I know why. I'm sorry, because I was I was running the program. So now I save it. Okay. Yeah, then so you I, could save it. You could give it a name, whatever name you'd like, and it so, gets saved to your profile. All right, so wait, wait, wait. So I did, I'm sorry. Let's go back here. Um, so now, oh, I see. So now I must have it saved. I just probably used the same name because, um, is that oh, possible? Because be. now I yeah, see you, that I have access to all the code. Is that what I yeah, wanted? Now, that's what you wanted. Now, if I make changes and I send it to you, now you have both your original one plus my edited one, like the new version. Correct. Um, but I guess we could keep working back and forth. But um, but we can't. I'm sure we can't uh, do anything that's collaborating, like in you know, in other words, where we both see. No, the, you, yeah. The at this time, you you can't both like 
open up the same code and, and edit it mutu- uh, you know, right, dynamically right. or, or synchronously at the same time. Right. No. But, it's but meant so that you could share code. So yep. I could start changes, send my changes to you, you review yeah. them, edit them, yeah. and then send it back to me. So it's still, it's similar to a very, very accessible <laughs> form of like GitHub in a sense, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a, a Google Doc, but it's it's more like a, a GitHub file sharing me- methodology. Right, right. Yeah, awesome. I love that. So, yeah, and, and uh, so the, the other cool thing that I'm super excited about when it comes out is you still have all your accessories, like the launcher, the, the sketch kit. Um, so right now, they're not available in the virtual world, but I'm super excited when the sketch kit comes out in the virtual world and you can actually draw on in the virtual <laughs> world. So that, that's, that's, that's the next. Oh, you know, what's I'm next, Rami. I mean, I know you have pull over there, the launcher, they need to do the launch. Oh, the Q that's for Q though, but who cares? Um, no, the launcher works for Or no, not too. launcher. Sorry. I mean the, the dart thing, the nerf, oh. the nerf gun <laughs> thing for Q. Cause then you could make like, virtual robot games yeah like shooting you're, shooting you're, nerf I darts like if, i feel like if it's up to you you're gonna have like robot wars <laughs> i mean soon. why wouldn't you <laughs> right is really the thing i'd like to know um yeah. we are almost out of time shockingly um so we're gonna keep i think i think we've convinced rami to keep the room open the class open for a little while so that people can um can continue to play with this a little bit um this is really cool i'm actually surprised at how good this is to be honest uh if i was if i was honest uh they've they've really done a good job with this and i, I think that, i gotta say um, as well mike it's I, i've played with a ton of virtual robotic simulators and emulators um the the seamless use of this is, is one i'm very impressed with like i've, I've played with a couple of other ones and it's either you know 2D and, and very static. It's leggy. It's slow. Um, I find this is just so easy to use, so quick. I mean, I don't have a super powerful gaming machine that I'm using right now. This like I have a, a, a pretty standard device, and um, and I, I, you don't need a complex video card. Like it just works, and yeah. I love that about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we should give uh, Steve some folks some heads up on other things going on. We have uh, two days left in the week. Um, I think we're going to do the core games study this afternoon. Um, so at three o'clock, join us at three o'clock for the core games uh, game design study group. Uh, if you've been participating in that already, um, wait, wait, what, join what us. What time did you say? What time did you just say? Did I say three o'clock? No, three o'clock would be right. For some reason, I heard four. I just want to make sure. Okay. No, 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 no. Three o'clock. Good, good, good. At two, at two o'clock is the U.S. Challenge live stream. Um, feel free to join us for that. We're talking about remote learning and remote teaching and some of the tools, including PolyUp, that we use for that. Um, tomorrow we will uh, do the core. Are we, we're not with Lynn tomorrow. That's next Friday, right? No, but tomorrow I think was, it, well, it was originally Fortnite Creative, so let's just. Oh, let's do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Okay. That okay, sounds so Fortnite good. Fortnite Creative, yeah. And Sounds then we'll see. Great. We'll see about. Uh, we'll see what we're doing tomorrow afternoon. We haven't decided that yeah, yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rami, thanks for joining us. This was rad. Yeah, this was really great. Thank you. Yeah, and, you're uh, very welcome. And if anyone wants to give it a shot, who wasn't on this uh, session or wants to start their own account, uh, you can head over to either uh, portal.makewonder.com or logicacademy.com forward slash dash neighborhood yeah. or class connect and just sign up for a free trial and try it out and uh, go from there and add your students and play with them. And, um, and I think that uh, Brad would like to hire you for some one-on-one tutoring um, after the session uh, as he is stuck on one of the puzzles, Rami. And, uh, I, I, we, it seems like he's one puzzle ahead, though, Steve. So yeah. I, I, we'll, we'll help him. But... So, see, I, I can't help him. He, he, needs, he needs you. So we quoted him an hourly rate for tutoring, and uh, you and he can discuss that after the stream. Actually, you, you know what? This would be a really cool thing to do with Brad. Brad ha- Brad Treffler yeah. has a show on our stream called Unscripted. It's Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. 
Um, if you're interested in coding, you should totally watch Brad's show on Inside Participate. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we should totally get Brad and Rami together to do coding on that show. That would be rad. Um, and I would totally watch that. Um, yeah, I think we're done. This has been an awesome, awesome time. Mm-hmm. Thanks great, so much. Uh, super active chat. Everyone seemed to really be into this. Um, this was a ton of fun. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks to Rami for joining us. And yeah, thanks, we'll, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you all this afternoon. All of you. We'll see all of you this afternoon. For yeah, that's right. Study. You need to thanks. thanks so much for having me, gentlemen. And this was awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have